Good morning, guys. This is going to be a video of a little bit different style than what I normally do. I'm waiting on a phone call. Uh, this is a call from Aaron's Co. about the Aaron's lawnmower. Uh, they have reached out to me, and they want to get with me about my areas of concern in hopes to maybe be able to fix the problems or come up with solutions to fix the problems that are associated with that mower that I have found even since recording the video, I'm pissed. No one told me beforehand. So if you're new to the channel, please be sure to click the like button and subscribe button and uh, share my videos, please. My name is Brian and you're watching So I'm gonna cut the camera and while I wait on this call, as soon as they call me, Nate will be turning the camera back on. And I'm gonna tell them, there they are. Here we go, folks. Hello? Yes. I'm good. How are you? Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Um, you heard my phone ring. What that was all about was, if you if you have watched the video, no one told me beforehand. I'm pissed. Uh, you know what that video is about. If you have not watched it, I will put a link in the description below and you need to go watch that video before you watch this one. Um, that was the Aaron's Corporation calling me. I told them I was going to be um, using this as a video and they asked me not to put the conversation uh, on social media, so I told I promised them I would not and I'm a man of my word They did tell me however. It was okay for me to translate to you what the conversation was about if you do not know I am very 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 unhappy with the um, the durability of that mower not only is it basically uh, for lack of a better way of saying it falling apart but it's also got some cosmetic issues that they have agreed to address. Now, when they're going to address it, I have no idea. They're a big corporation. I don't know. But I did want to come to you and let you know some of the things that they discussed with me and what their plans are moving ahead. The one thing I was shocked about is they told me that there was no patent on the blades. I'm not so sure that I agree with that because I called Aaron's not long after I bought that mower when I discovered I was going to have to change the blades and I had gone to my dealer and they told me that I would have to buy the factory blades OEM blades original blades however you want to say it because there was nothing in the aftermarket that was available now yes that was a brand new model but it had been out for like six months there was no reason why the aftermarket didn't have time to catch up. That being said, the lady that I spoke to, I believe her name was Diane. I Don't quote me on that because I don't remember. But I know her name started with a D. I do remember that. She told me herself, She after putting me on hold and coming back, I had called to find out why there was a patent on the blade. Because that's what I had been told. Well, and, and understand, I, I want this to be completely clear. I was told that by Rotary Corporation. I was told that by Oregon. I was told that by Stins. That there was a patent on that blade and they were not allowed to reproduce it. So, my glasses are dirty. So, I called Aaron's myself. 
and I spoke to, like I said, a lady that start her name started with a D. I can't remember if it was Dina, Diane, Diana. It was something like that. I do remember that. But uh, she came back to the phone. She took me off hold, and she she informed me. She said, "Yes, there is indeed a patent on those blades." I said, "Well, how long is the patent going to last?" The reason I asked that was because I wanted to see if the aftermarket was going to at any time in the near future uh, start mass producing those bl blades for that particular mower. Well, she informed me at that time that the patent was a 10 year long patent. Now, this these guys that I talked to on the phone told me there was no patent that they were aware of. Now, there's a there's a discrepancy here. All I can tell you is, every time I've gone to look for blades, the style OEM style, factory style blades for that machine, they don't exist. You have to buy them from uh, the, you have to buy the factory style blade. And it is produced by the Aarons Corporation. Am I calling them liars? No, I'm not. What I am saying is that there is a wire crossed somewhere that someone doesn't know exactly what's going on. I don't know. All I can tell you is the factory blades are $83.54 for three. And the aftermarket blade, I run Oregon blades. They're made for a Dixie chopper. They're 14 and a half inches long with a 5 8 hole in the center. The same size blade that's on the errands now. It's the same length, same size hole. The only difference is one's flat and one's got that offset design. That's the only difference. Well, um, they cut very well. I mean, if you've watched any of my videos, you see that the errands cuts, it actually cuts very well and lays beautiful stripes. But it's just not durable enough. Now, the subjects that we covered, I've got them right here written down. The subjects that we covered were the back seat rest. I'll go over that in a second. The caster forks, uh, the, 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 it's too light. It doesn't have any, even though it's a residential, I would not want to be caught on a hill like this on a hill because all it does, the tail end of it slides out from underneath you and you get stuck in ditches and stuff. Uh, the deck design, and I'll go over that too. The uh, gas tank fill location and the overall durability of the machine itself. Now, I'm not going to hit every one of these because if I did, this video would be an hour long. And I don't want you to have to sit through me rambling for an hour. So, I'm going to hit the most important parts. The back seat rest. I've got a video I've got to do for them. And I'm going to be making my own video. And I, but I'm not going to release it until after they view the video that I'm sending them. But the back seat rest, uh, the fact the, the leather comes down underneath it like that, and then it comes over the top like this, it's got a plastic hook type system. I can't do it with my hands, it's like this. Well, after a period of time, bouncing going down the highway and in, in use, the plastic gets weak and it lets go. Well, now the wood backing on that seat is exposed to the weather because you can't keep it fastened. And I told them they need to put three inch wide, that's three inch, three inch wide Velcro on the, the part that comes underneath and the part that comes down the top and fasten it. The reason I said three inches is because there's a lot of strength in there and it will last for years. If you put a strip this wide, it, it might last a year before the Velcro actually starts letting go. But that three inch wide Velcro strap across it, it'll last for years and years and years. And they asked me why I was concerned about that. I said, well, when the wood is exposed to the weather, to the elements, it's not going to last. It's going to start splitting and swelling and falling apart. Then you're going to have to replace the seat. I said, and I, I, I posed this to them. Would you rather have a seat that people brag on? Or would you have rather have a seat that people have to replace once a year or once every two years because the wood backing is falling apart? I said those are the questions you have to you have to answer in the engineering department 
And, but you have to think in the mindset of an end user. And I said, that's the problem with, with manufacturers. They think like engineers. They don't think like John Q. Public out there in the middle of the yard mowing grass. And I said, and that's what you have to do. But anyway, uh, I'm going to make this short. I'm fixing to wrap this up. The uh, other part was the deck design. Now, I'm not going to walk out there and show you. I'm not going to walk out to the shop and show you the deck. Just understand, if you're looking at the deck like this, instead of it being flat, it comes like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it up in there. It comes in like this, goes up, goes over, goes down, and goes back. They said it was designed that way for a specific reason. If someone wanted to put a bagger on that mower, that prevented having to have a turbo fan. I get that. But I told them, I said, well, how many people have bought a bagger that has bought this machine? They couldn't answer that question. I said, well, you, your, your, your ratios of baggers versus non-baggers is probably pretty low. I said, I'd say maybe, oh, maybe 3% out of 100% are actually putting a bagger on this machine. I said, wouldn't it be better to have that closed in and then let the customer decide, hey, I want to put a bagger on this. Do you have one available? Then you say, yes, we can sell you a bagger as a separate attachment or a separate implement, however you want to say it. And then you just simply take this plate off the top of the deck and you can attach your bagger. And they said, in all honesty, guys, they said, we hadn't thought about it that way. And I said, if you watch my video, I'm still pissed part two. I said, you will see, I said, me and my son both get filthy operating this machine. And I'm going to tell you what I told them. Flossie, my wife, I refer to her as Flossie on video for privacy purposes. I said, I've been in business for 24 years. Going on, go, I'm, in, I'm into my 25th year now. I said, up until I bought that machine, she's never had to pre-wash my clothes, nor my son's clothes. Now our work clothes, using that machine, she has to do a pre-wash to get uh, as much of the dirt out as possible before she wastes detergent putting it in the, in the washing machine. I said, she's never had to do that in 24 years of business. I said, and the only common denominator with me and my son is that machine. Guys, it was a good phone call. They actually listened to me. They took value in what I had to say. And guys, I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for you guys. Anybody out there that sees this video or sees my other video and says, well, I, would, I don't know if I'd want to buy um, that machine or not. That's what they called me for. They, they sent me an email while I was on vacation. You saw the vacation video. We got an email while I was on while we were on vacation. They they set this whole thing up. I didn't. I didn't call them. They they responded to that video, and then they sent me an email, and they set up the phone call. They wanted their design team and their engineering team on the call with them. They had only allocated thirty minutes to talk to me. Well, a thirty minute phone call turned into more than an hour. And at the end of the phone call, they asked me not to release that phone call because of privacy purposes. They don't want information getting out there that they have priority over and they don't want released to the public. And I understand that. I told them, I said, no. I said, I will do a follow-up video with the phone ringing and that's exactly what I've done. So anyway, did they listen? Yes. Are they going to be making changes? Most likely. I can't guarantee that. They may have hung up the phone and said, I ain't, we ain't listening to that redneck. The machine's fine. I don't know if they did or not, and I'm not here to judge that. I hope they didn't, but I did tell them, I always got a car, big car coming by when I'm recording. I did tell them that um, I would love to be a spokesperson for Gravely. I said, there's a lot of guys up your way that won't run Gravely because... They don't like them for various reasons. I said, this video coming out helped open your eyes to the fact that maybe there are some things that need to be changed about your product to make more people like them. I said, now I love them. I said, I've been 
And I told them about my first Gravely. I'm not going to go into that. But they were astonished that that machine is 15 years old. It has been put through the ringer and it's still going. The guy that bought it from me is still using it. And it's now got over, I think, 13 or 14,000 hours on it. And it's still going. It's still got the original pumps and the original transmissions. So take that for what it's worth. But anyway, guys, I just I want to keep you guys up to date on what's going on with this with the Aaron situation. I also talked to them about the dealer, and they were astonished at the way I was treated. Please keep up with this this story, because that's what it's turning out to be is a story. I had no clue when I posted that video over by the front of my shop that it was going to turn into this. I never dreamed that I would be talking to the design and engineering team at Aaron's Corporation. Never thought about it. Never never, never crossed my mind. But I did. And so this is turning into a developing story. But the one thing I did tell them was, I said, what would make me happy? I said, I know this isn't going to happen. I, and, and understand, take this in the spirit in which it's meant, as a joke. I said, it would, I said, it would tickle me to death if y'all would if y'all were to call me and say, hey, we want to make this right. We don't want you being dissatisfied. You're a loyal customer. You're a small business, and we want to make you happy. So what we're going to do, we're going to buy you out of this machine, and you can take this back to the dealer that you want to deal with, and you give it to them, and you buy you another machine. And I told them, I don't expect you to give me a machine. No, I'm, I'm a blue collar worker. I'm a business owner. I believe in the American dream. Working hard, making your own way, making your own money, and being able to sleep at night because I haven't robbed people. But anyway, whether that ever happens or not, I don't know and I don't care. That was just a, an impromptu thing I told them because I want them to know that would, that would satisfy, that would be all, over the moon satisfy me. Whether it happens or not, I'll never know. I prob probably will never hear about that. But anyway, that's going to do it for this one, guys. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, my analytics tell me that only 4% of you that are watching, quite regularly actually, are subscribed to the channel. I don't know why. I don't know why. But please, if you watch my videos on a regular basis, or if you just pop in every now and then, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. Also, share these videos, guys. Please, that's how my name gets out there. That's how the channel gets recognized. Share my videos, please. Especially with someone you know would, would be interested in and actually learn something from the video. So anyway, this is Brian with Big South Outdoors TV, reminding you to live big, live southern, and live outdoors. See you on the next one, folks. Have a good one.